In this video, we will be exploring the device configuration category in Crimson 3.2. I'll be using a FlexEdge DA70 for this demonstration. While device configuration is a new category to Crimson 3.2, many settings that were in the communications category in earlier versions of Crimson are now organized here. Specifically, the device configuration category defines which hardware options are fitted to the device and allows the configuration of networking features, such as the unit's IP address. There are two ways to edit the device configuration. The Crimson configuration tool, which I'll be using in this video, and the system web server, which we'll briefly explore as well. Some individual features will vary by device, but device configuration is always divided into four sections. Hardware configuration, system configuration, device personality, and user configuration. Users can click on the top level of any of these main sections to export configurations from Crimson, import configurations into Crimson, extract configurations from a device, and specify whether or not to include individual configurations with the download. Users can also click on the top level of device configuration to export the entire device configuration or extract it from a device. The hardware configuration section is used to select the hardware options installed in the device. For a FlexEdge device, this includes specifying which sleds are installed and for a DA70, which IO modules are fitted. This section also defines global properties like the target software group, virtual HMI resolution, and the number of tunnel or VLAN interfaces. When you make any hardware configuration changes, you will be prompted to commit those changes to update the system configuration with the new interfaces and options. For example, when I add a dual Ethernet sled to my database, I receive this prompt to commit the change. I can click where it says hardware in red text on the status bar, which is a shortcut to the top level of hardware configuration. From here, I will commit the change. Because I'm adding a dual Ethernet sled, two Ethernet interfaces will be added in the system configuration section, which manages most of the device's network settings. As you can see, we now have a total of four Ethernet interfaces, two built in and two from the sled. As an example, I'll change the IP address of the Ethernet 1 interface. I'll start by simply clicking on Ethernet 1 in the Network Interfaces section to open it in the editing pane. We can see that this port is configured for DHCP by default, but I can easily change the port mode to manual configuration and set a static IP address like this. Users will also find firewall settings, routing settings, and more in this section, and these may vary depending on the device being configured. The services section is used to configure several network services hosted by the device. Some examples of network services use cases include the FTP server for data log retrieval and the SMTP client for email alerts. Users can also find options for time synchronization, DHCP server settings, and more in this section. The security section is used to configure various types of certificates. For example, if you'd like to use TLS for a secure MQTT connection, you could start by adding the TLS certificate into the Trusted Certs section here. The Download section is used to enable or disable download via the available download interfaces. As you can see, these are enabled by default. The USB Devices section is used to configure additional USB devices attached to one of the USB host ports, such as a USB mouse or thumb drive. The Device Personality section allows you to templatize your database for use across multiple devices, with differences captured in a simple list of named values. Each setting in the system configuration can be set to either a fixed value or to a named entry from the personality. Crimson databases can likewise access personality fields via a set of system functions. Device personality is covered in depth in a separate video in this series, but here is a quick example of using it to configure my Ethernet 1 IP address. Finally, the user configuration section defines the users that are allowed to access the system web server, the FTP server, and the TCP IP download mechanism. In other words, any users here can be thought of as administrative users with adjustable access rights to the device. This section also allows configuration of an optional RADIUS server for user validation. 
Note that by default, user configuration is not included in the download from Crimson, so you'll need to change this setting to yes to make any user changes. As mentioned earlier, users can also edit their device configuration from the system web server, as shown here. All of the features discussed in this video are available here, and users can confirm any changes with the save icon. The device configuration category in Crimson 3.2 is a powerful tool for tailoring your device to meet specific requirements, from hardware selection to advanced networking features. By mastering this category, you'll ensure that your device is optimized for your unique application. Thank you for watching.